how would you handle an angler coming in on your honey hole? That's what we're going to talk about right now. When you're in your fishing derby or tournament and you have found the spot. Hey Jordan, we're live. What's going on? Oh, just having to play a little defense. Got frogs firing everywhere out here. You gotta protect your water. And someone comes in on you, encroaches into your area. What should you do? I'm thinking about just cranking up and going around in front of them. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team. Now, before we get started, I'm gonna do story time. I grew up in Michigan, did a lot of freshwater fishing, walleye, bass, smalley, all that stuff. Then moved to Virginia somewhere in my 13, 14 year old age and started playing basketball and baseball more serious, even though I played it while I was younger and stop fishing. Then when I moved down here, somewhere about 15, 16, I still continue to play basketball and baseball and fishing wasn't crucial for me. It wasn't until right around 2021 that I got back into fishing. I got back into fishing because I started doing websites for guides and for boat manufacturers and for motor manufacturers, all sorts of people. That was 32 years ago. That started the, cr the craziness of bass fishing for me. But I, I received a free boat at one point in time that was a saltwater boat. So while I I started bass fishing again I started to dive into saltwater fishing because I at that point in time I wanted to know everything I could about fishing in general and by that I mean saltwater fishing fly fishing going out west going to everywhere around the country to fish as much as possible and during this time I would fish Mosquito Lagoon for redfish and all this is going to tie in now there was a redfish cup coming to Merritt Island and I had was not going to join it because I'm not a tournament fisherman and during this time I had found a school of fish locked into an area now, not really locked but they weren't coming out because there was so much bait inside this area that they just were surviving on this area now when I say school redfish there were probably a thousand to fifteen hundred in this little area and my boat could skinny up into there now I knew the redfish cup was coming to Merritt Island but it didn't have any bearing on my fishing I was fishing Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and found that group of fish on Wednesday now I got up Thursday morning crazy early because I wanted to go fish again and really have fun till it got super hot. But when I got there and started fishing, a guide who at that time I wasn't he wasn't a client of mine. I had probably five or six hundred guides throughout the east coast of Florida that I was doing websites for. But this was someone that I really looked up to and really admired and was well recognized as one of the best red fishermen in Mosquito Lagoon, if not the best. But again, he wasn't a client. He came in on came in on me and said, Steve, is there any way you cannot fish this area now in those three previous three days I had not seen him at all at all now he did mention I'm fishing the redfish cup and I think the school of fish that you're on is the winning school now mind you I had no skin in the game I was just fun fishing but being someone that I respected and knowing that this was a tournament that he was gonna fish and knowing that the fish that I was on were perfect slot fish they were all 26 and 3 quarters or they were just on the edge of being over slot and I decided to just go sure these are yours good luck a couple days later he won the redfish cup on Merritt Island so why do I bring this up these days tournament anglers are on TV or internet more than ever and I think this is happening more and more that we're seeing anglers like Jordan Lee and Dylan Hayes at the last heavy hitters cup here in Kissimmee chain we see the confrontation between each one and they have to stand their ground but at what what point is it right and what point is it wrong because we don't need grown men acting like children and I'm not saying Jordan or or Dylan acted like a child. There are others. When I think of something like this, this has been around for years. I remember the Iconelli and KVD exchange on a community hole that was happening. You think that's cool? I said, you think that's cool? Just tell me to leave, Kevin. I'll leave. Now these guys are in it for the money. If you find a honey hole or a spot that holds those fish, you want to keep them to yourself. But if someone comes in and starts fishing the same area that hasn't fished there over several days, what is the forum to talk to them? How do you talk to them? Because when money is on the line that these guys are fishing for, it's an issue. Because you don't want someone to come in, pound those fish, and then not replenish. And unfortunately, this has happened to Dylan several times with Keith Pochet, Dakota Ebear, and Brandon Coulter had an issue, and Brandon Coulter and Ryan Salzman had an issue at Heavy Eaters also. Michael, I've been doing this with 12 years with you. I never had this issue with you, and that's for a reason. And I know this happened on Bass. It happens in Bass. 
but it also seems to be happening more on Major League Fishing. And I do believe there's something to do with the score tracker because these anglers can hear the score tracker, hear how one angler is might just be on fire, and possibly find out where that angler is fishing. However, when is enough enough? When is it too much to encroach on that angler's body of water? Or, in this case, probably, maybe, hypothetically, allegedly, I don't even know, and maybe the angler watched the internet feed from the day before and found out exactly where that angler was fishing. There's these common little jokes and these little stabs of when an angler catches a fish hiding that they're catching a bent rod or catching bringing that fish in they don't want the ang other anglers to know where they're going and that's perfectly fine but when that angler stops his boat and trolls over to you and starts fishing the exact way that you're fishing when is enough enough and should we be giving grief to the angler who's confronting the person or the angler who's trying to steal their spot now again these anglers are competing for hundreds of thousands of dollars and the water is free for everyone to fish but when is enough enough so that's my question to you have you ever been in a fishing tournament and had a spot where someone came in on you because they saw that you were catching good fish did they use the same lures did you find them that as they encroached on your area that you were aggressive towards them in little tournaments it might be counterproductive to make an enemy of somebody in these large tournaments where you're fishing for a hundred grand are we supposed to buckle down and protect the water that we're fishing what would you do that's what i want to know are these guys right for protecting the area they're fishing i kind of believe they are but at the same time the whole area is for every, everyone to fish and it just brings in more drama into the whole fishing community or the fishing tournament community. Should there be rules against that? Should there be an area where you say you have to have X amount of feet between each person? And if you're there first, don't you have dibs on the place? Now I'll be honest, I, I do think that in the case this recently, Jordan Lee and Dylan Hayes on the heavy hitters, I felt that Jordan was correct, but it caused drama. It caused a little bit of a beef between the two of them, or a possible beef between the two of them. And Jordan has had several of those incidents over the years. And of course, the biggest one, I remember Randall Tharp being in one of a guy just cutting him off. When is it all right to cut another angler off? How much gap should you give him? If there's a gap that's going down this way, and you can see my boat heading that way, and you go 100 feet in front of me, you've just elim eliminated everything else I'm gonna fish. Now we might fish different ways and we might still be okay, but nobody wants to fish secondhand water. Nobody wants sloppy seconds. So tell me in the comments below what you think. Are these guys right for defending the area they're fishing? Is it all right to confront the angler and get upset and talk smack about them? What would you do? So comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you very soon. Cheers.